Praise the Lord. Amen. So whatever fire you are going through, Amen. come this and encounter Jesus in the fire. That you can see his hand upon your life in the name of Jesus. So come for that encounter. Come with somebody. Let's take the gospel out. Let's go out and do our part. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. My God, thank you. Amen. Open your Bibles with me to the book of Luke. Chapter 24. Luke chapter 24. Can you guys just balance us out on the monitors, please? I don't know that side, but on the monitors. Okay, Luke chapter 24. We this is our communion service. And uh, every time we partake of the communion meal, we remember our Lord Jesus Christ. You still know him? Do yes. still remember him? Yes. Why we gather like this? Yes. We want to remember him again as we partake of this communion meal. And also, you know, something supernatural happens every time that we partake of the communion meal. It's filled with power. It's filled with healing. It's filled with, with anointing for deliverance. Every time we partake of this meal, we are empowered with divine strength. That we, that we tap into all that God wants to give us for life. Are you ready? Are you ready? Yeah. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? We're reading from verses 13. Luke chapter 24. We're reading from verses 13. It's a long piece of scripture, but I believe it will be worth your while to read through it. So from verses 13. That same day, two of Jesus' followers were walking to the village of Emmaus, seven miles from Jerusalem. And as they walked along, they were talking about everything that had happened. And as they talked and discussed these things, Jesus himself suddenly came and began walking with them. But God kept them from recognizing him. He asked them, What are you discussing so intently as you walk along? They stopped short, sadness written across their faces. Then one of them, Cleopas, replied, You must be the only person in Jerusalem who hasn't heard about all the things that have happened here over the last few days. What things, Jesus asked. The things that have happened to Jesus, the man from Nazareth. They said he was a prophet who did powerful miracles and he was a mighty teacher in the eyes of God and all the people. But our leading priests and our religious leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and they crucified him. We had hoped he was the Messiah who had come to rescue Israel. This all happened three days ago. Then some women from our group or his followers were at his tomb early this morning and they came back with an amazing report. They said his body was missing and they had seen angels who told them that Jesus is alive. Verses 24. Some of our men ran out to see and sure enough his body was gone just as the woman had said. Then Jesus said to them, you foolish people, you find it so hard to believe that all, you find it so hard to believe all that the prophets wrote in the scriptures. Wasn't it clearly predicted that the Messiah would have to suffer all these things before entering his glory. Then Jesus took them through the writings of Moses and all the prophets, explaining from all the scriptures the things concerning himself. By this time, they were reading, they were, they were nearing the uh, mouth. And at the end of their journey, Jesus acted as if he was going on, but they begged him, stay the night with us, since it is getting late. So he went with them, and as they sat down to eat, he took bread and blessed it. Then he broke and gave it to them, and suddenly their eyes were open, and they recognized him. And at that moment, he disappeared. Verses 32, they said to each other, didn't our hearts burn within us as we talked with us on the road and explained the scriptures to us? And within the hour, they were on their way back to Jerusalem, where they found the eleven disciples and others who were gathered with them, who said, the Lord has really risen. And he then appeared to Peter. Bless the reading of God's word. Amen. Bless the reading of God's Amen. word. Hallelujah. Amen. This is one of the most vivid accounts of our Lord Jesus Christ after his resurrection. Amen. This is one of the most descriptive, most detailed. And, and this is a story. What a beautiful story that reveals to us 
Not only something about who we are. But also how Jesus opens our eyes to see him for who he is and he also shares on how we can get to know praise the Lord um, the Holy Spirit has been impressing this in my spirit and I believe this morning that this message must change some lives yeah. that this message must release some people to be elevated to go up to a higher level praise the lord Amen. i believe it has the power to change your life Upside down. It's a now word. Yes. It's a word for elevation. Yes. Many will not see this elevation that we speak about. Hallelujah. Amen. But I pray after this morning session. As you get to understand how Jesus breaks down his word. Some who don't heed what Jesus is, is sharing with his people, oftentimes don't get to experience the blessings that he promises. Family, this, journey, this journey to a mouse is, is both a literal and a spiritual journey for this man. On one side, it recounts the story of, of two people who, after the crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus, were walking back to the hometown about seven miles from Jerusalem. And on the other side, it describes for us, it outlines for us the journey that every one of us will take in this life. A journey of not recognizing Jesus. A journey of then understanding the scriptures. And a journey of then recognizing him for who he is. And of course then going out to become witnesses for the Lord Jesus Christ. We are all on a journey. Praise the Lord. Amen. We are all on a journey. And it is, it, is, it is important that we do not get stuck on the way. It is important that we don't get to a certain place and remain there. Some might wonder why we want to talk about this, but this is important. See, when we look at the, the NLT, New Living Translation, it tells us that these two people were followers of Jesus Christ. When we read through the CEV, the contemporary English version, it says that these two, these two people we know one is Cleopas, we don't know who the other is, whether it's a man or a woman. But it says that these two people were disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. So there were much more than just the twelve. The twelve were the apostles, but there were many other disciples of the Lord. So the NLT says they were followers, the CEV says they were disciples. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. When, when Luke introduces the story, he says that these two are now leaving Jerusalem. To put it crudely and, and perhaps just to bring out what they were going through, Jesus is dead. Jesus is dead. Jesus Brutally crucified. And there's nothing left for them in Jerusalem. I say for in the That's why they are leaving town. They don't go. Remember, Jesus was crucified on the Friday. And, and they crossed over to Shabbat on Saturday. So, so in understanding this, they couldn't leave on Saturday. Walking long distances was considered work. And you don't work on Shabbat. So they get up on Sunday morning, they wait for Sunday morning to leave the city. But if it was not Shabbat, I guess the moment Jesus was, was closed in that tomb, they would have made their way out of the city because they were now in a place of confusion. 
Hallelujah. The scriptures say they were sad. It says they were sad because of everything that was going on in Jerusalem. They're not sure about the future. They're not sure what will happen now. The thing that we thought was going to happen is not happening anymore. We thought we were going to follow this man and travel with this man and experience all of the nice things that were happening, but suddenly all of this is cut short. They're not sure what, where they'll be going to. They've heard all of this information about the resurrection. But they're not really sure about the way forward. And that is one of the reasons why Jesus calls these two people and he uses them to speak to a group of people and Jesus calls them unbelieving. He calls them unbelieving. When, when, when we look at the specific groups of people that Jesus met after the resurrection, you will realize that it is not coincidental. So Jesus didn't just pitch up anywhere, anyhow, just to show himself and to touch a few people. He was very deliberate. Jesus meets with different groups of people to deal with different situations. Praise the Lord. Amen. He showed himself to Thomas the doubter. Jesus met with the apostles a couple of times to encourage them to, to confirm his word. And so one specific time he meets with them to bring them back on course because they are straight. He uses the time as well to restore Peter. And I believe in this incident in Luke chapter 24. He meets with these two people so that he could speak to a specific group of people in the churches today. You see, these two people represent the followers who are not really believers. And there are many people like that in the kingdom of God. Like these two followers of Jesus Christ. Like these two disciples of Jesus Christ. They were excited about the vision cast by Jesus. They were excited. They were, they were happy about the promises that he had made about the future of delivering them. But the moment trouble came in but the hotel will figure in king and katazo they left mahaba the moment they didn't understand the moment they were not in control anymore they decided to pull back there's a group of people in the kingdom of God when something comes in that conflicts with their way conflicts with their lifestyle does not suit their narrative they pull back but they live their lives the way they want to live it day after. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And Jesus is addressing that group when he speaks to these two people. There's, there's a group of people in the kingdom of God who just go on with their lives. They were going back to him house just to live their lives again minus Jesus now don't get me wrong family this too knew Jesus they knew about Jesus they walked with him they watched him closely they studied his life they knew all the stories because they could share it again they had all the right words they knew the hallelujahs and the amens they knew the Greek and the Hebrew they saw the miracles they had 
had the testimony of the miracles. They ate the bread and the fish. They spoke of how tasty the bread and fish was that was multiplied in the hands of Jesus. They were so up to date with the latest information that they are having a whole conversation with this man. They don't know who he is, but they, they're giving this man the latest information about Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. In, in, in fact, they rebuke him as to his, his lack of knowledge or his ignorance about current affairs in Jerusalem. They, they ask him in this verse, how is it? Are you the only person alive in Jerusalem who does not know about Jesus and does not know about what is going on? They, they express their shock at his ignorance. When in fact, they are the ignorant ones. They question the man about his ignorance. Yet they do not see the Messiah standing in front of them. They could not see that this was the Messiah himself. You see, the scripture does tell us when we read through Luke 24, the scripture does say that they were kept from recognizing Jesus. They were kept from seeing or recognizing Jesus. But can I tell you something? They were kept from recognizing Jesus because of their own doing. The why do I say that? Mary didn't have a problem recognizing Jesus. The disciples didn't have a problem recognizing Jesus. He, he, he was not transfigured. He was not changed. Thomas the doubter didn't have a problem recognizing and seeing that he was the Messiah. So why was it a problem that these men or these two people could not see that it was Jesus? Do you know why? I believe that they were at a low level. They were at a very low level and God did not allow them to be able to see the Messiah at that stage of where they are. They were kept from seeing Jesus. Lower level. Praise the Lord. Amen. And we have many people who don't see the light. Who don't see the light. We have many people in the kingdom of God who the simplest matters of faith are difficult for them to understand. You, you, you try to talk to them and it's, it's, it's like you are fighting. It. You can't get the simplest things through. Praise the Lord. Amen. Sometimes it's not because you're not a good teacher, it's because the people you're teaching are on another level. Amen. That they are kept from seeing the truth of His word. Not yet, Cornerstone. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. It's like we're talking about two different Jesus. Praise the Lord. As if you may explain for the nation. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But what I love about this, in the meantime, I'm not open. What I love about this in the meantime, I'm not open, is that despite their position, despite their position, Jesus wants to elevate them. Despite where they find themselves, despite the fact that they keep they find themselves in a low place. It's by so the Hebrews tells us that he's seated on the right hand side of the Father interceding for you and you said I'm in an hour. And and the Father is saying, No, 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 these ones are blind. Daddy, please let them smile. Please, Lord, one more time. Let me just talk with them. Let me just share with them. They'll get it. They'll see the light. I'm on the crowd. I'm just going to teach them a little bit more. Maybe the pastor didn't do a good job. Maybe he didn't do the job. But I want them. I want their eyes open. I want them to be that's the beauty of Jesus. That's the beauty of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. And when you read the text, you can read it at home again when you when, when you get home. And, and, and I love that Jesus is not giving up with this too. And he keeps baiting them. Even after that, 
initial meeting, that initial few words, he keeps baiting them. He says, who, who is this man, Jesus? He keeps them talking. He, he keeps inquiring from them as to what do they know and what don't they know. And he's not doing it to, to call them foolish. He's not doing it to say that they're ignorant. He's doing it so he knows what to teach them. He's doing it so he knows what to give them. He's doing it so he knows what to give them. He seeks them out. We have a full hand of a full now. He's pursuing them. We have a land of the land. Hallelujah. Amen. See, he knows that they're not where they should be. We have with Abeko Lamele. But he still pursues them and he pursues you and I. He's always pursuing us. Always sharing with us. Always talking about to us. And when I think about elevation, we've, we've divined, defined elevation is going from a lower place to a higher place never going from a lower place to a higher place he didn't answer shake them up and then tell them it's going from a sleeping place to a waking place now when we define elevation it's about coming up higher going from a lower place to a higher place Praise the Lord. It, it's not, although that's the first thing that comes to our mind, and it's not just it's about good. physical promotion. It's not just about finances and material things. I believe that the highest level of elevation is when our eyes are open spiritually. When your eyes are open spiritually, everything else will find its place. But problem is that we seek the wrong type of elevation. When your eyes are open, money will never be your problem. When your eyes are open, people will never be your problem. For as long as our eyes are on money and our eyes are on people, you remain at a low level. But when Jesus opens up your eyes to see the way he has purposed for us to see, everything changes. Everything changes. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. So we need to be elevated. We need to come up higher. Your whole perception of life will change. Life starts to make sense. Life starts to make sense. When our eyes are open, we start to find vision and purpose. Trying to find vision and purpose without Christ is running around blind. Running around blind. When He opens our eyes, He gives sense to life. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now, before I get ahead of myself, Let, let's just consider the experience of this man. As Bege in Biloyal and Dota. In verses 13 of Luke chapter 24. In verse 24. Keep it open there. We believe in the lap of the man. We just go through the text. As when it says, Now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Imaq. About seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. And as they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them. But they were kept from recognizing him. So we've talked about that. And we realize that it is possible. It is possible to, to walk with Jesus. And not see him and not recognize him. It is possible to be in church yeah. and not know Jesus Christ. It's possible to sing the songs, eat the bread and fish, taste the blessings of the Lord, and not know him. These men are a witness to that. They are an example of that. It's possible with Genzeka. To be forgiven of our sins. And be heaven ready. To not really know the Messiah. Or yeah. not be able to recognize the Messiah. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 
Praise the Lord. Yeah. Amen. Perhaps that's why Jesus said when he comes with Lord Trumpet. Because yeah. some of the saved will not know. Yeah. Left for us to know, you'll be left behind even after you bought the ticket. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. So we, but we must be able to recognize him. Now, now let's let us look why. Am, am I being harsh on these on these two people? Uh, let's look at verses 19. From verses 19. You know, and then they go on speaking to Jesus. It says, The things that happened to Jesus. The man from Nazareth, they said, he was a prophet who did powerful miracles. And he was a mighty teacher in the eyes of God and all the people. But our living priest and other religious leaders handed him over to be condemned to death. And they crucified him. We had hoped he was the Messiah who had come to rescue Israel. This all happened three days ago. Wonderful commendation to Jesus. Wonderful testimony to Jesus. Praise the Lord. Amen. You see, even there, there are times when we do thanksgiving, when people come Christ to give honor to God, Christ, they don't know Him. Praise the Lord. They don't know Him. Because look at these men talking with nice words, sharing wonderful things. But here's my problem. Look how they see Him. Look how they see him to then call him a prophet who did miracles. Was, was, was that all that Jesus was? Now, which is without prophet, yes, he was a prophet. He didn't stop at that. He was not just a prophet. He was not limited to just being a prophet. It's like, it's like saying, you see me driving a car, which means I'm a driver. I didn't hear that. Praise the Lord. One of the many things that I will do, I'm not limited to that role. And this is how they see Jesus. One of the things that was in, yes, he was a prophet, but he was not only a prophet. But we have some prophet in Japan. Praise the Lord. Because the baby is a mother. But that is not all that she is. And if you only know her as that, what a loss to you. What a loss to her. Because the, the, the more you know of her, the more you can tap in. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Jesus ultimately is the Son of God. It's not just a prophet. They must assume prophet the most important part of his life. Despite being around him, they missed the fact that he was the Son of God. See, they, 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 they low down there. And, and then they describe him as a mighty teacher. A mighty teacher in the eyes of God. A mighty teacher in the eyes of God. Guys, before it, this is God. They have a, they had and God, they walk, I don't know how long was they walking with the Messiah, but they did not come to understand that they were following God. And they rather see him as a mighty teacher in the eyes of God. They've not caused the revelation. They followed, but they don't know. So close yet so far. So close yet so far. And sadly, that's going to be the story of some people. So close yet so far. Praise the Lord. Amen. Because there are times in our lives that we see Jesus as provider and that's it. The only time we come to him is to provide. We don't see him as the Son of God. We don't see him as sovereign. Praise the Lord. Amen. And then, and then in verses 21, this is, verse 21. This is, then in verses 21, verse 21, listen to this. They say to Jesus, after listing all of these commendations, we hoped he was the Messiah. Yeah. Past tense. Yeah. 
Jesus is tense. Oh, no, they were done. They were finished. That sentence me. nails it in for me. They were done. No, 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 no. We heard all the things. We heard there's a deliverer coming. Since but he's dead. Our hopes are dashed. We hoped he was the Messiah. They followed. They were considered disciples. But now they don't believe anymore. Because they didn't understand the scriptures. They went through something difficult. They have been disappointed. It seems like their side lost. Their hopes are dashed. It didn't work out the way they calculated it would. Praise the Lord. It's like when you're watching a soccer game and the team's losing, you switch it off. You leave the stadium before the 90 minutes. It's done. Hope is gone. That's what they were doing. They were going back to their city. They were going home. It's done. They walked with him. They had, while they were walking with him, they were calculating how they would be delivered. How they would be blessed. How they would be blessed. How they would be blessed. Who walk amongst us who do the same. We calculate how Jesus should Break out in my life. By 2024, I should be in America. 2024, I should be mad. 2024, I should have this or I should have had that. But and when those things don't matter, the way we've calculated it, then we hit the road. Back to the mind. Back to him, the mover. Their hopes were dashed. You see, but I mean, on their side, they, they they had got a lot of information. While they walked with Jesus, they had accumulated a lot of information. And they used that information to make a calculated decision. This is the wise thing to do with the information that we have at hand. See, we sing the songs. We wear the clothes. We wear the, the, the crosses. We pray the prayers. But we don't know who the man is. We don't know who the man is. See, the, 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 the disciples see the person. But they're not seeing his identity. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You see, at the heart of the Mahal story is a urging towards deeper faith in the Gaiti Alenda. That's the heart of the story. An urging towards deeper faith. There are many of us that the moment we, we, we hit a roadblock, we go back. Doesn't matter how long we've been sitting in the church. You, you have one argument with a fellow believer. I'm, I'm back to you. I'm going back. You have a financial difficulty because you calculated that this is how it should be. I'm going back to your house. And Jesus meets them. Jesus meets them and Jesus talks to them. Jesus wants them to recognize and Jesus wants them to discern. Jesus doesn't want them to just see, just attend, just worship. He wants them to get to a place in their lives where they will see Jesus on every street, every situation, every encounter, every person. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. If you if you can't recognize Jesus, how do you see him in me? If I can't recognize and see Jesus, how do I see him in you? That's why we break one another. Because we can't recognize the Messiah in one another. We, we meet him in our places of work. When he's using people to bless you. But because we don't recognize. We lose. We lose. 
Praise the Lord. Amen. So at the heart of the story is an urging towards deeper faith, to recognize, to discern, and not just to see. In the Italian, I mean, we'll say, Life is true as well as a companion. We need to open our eyes to what is before us. Different levels. Dr. Nelly was on the on point. The ministry. The, the prophet needed his servant's eyes to be open to see. God needs your eyes to be open to see. That when you see attack, don't you see the help? When you get the instruction to give, what do you do to give? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If you knew it was Jesus standing there and saying, Give. Won't you be encouraged to give it because you know he's got your back? But we can't recognize him different levels. Different levels. Listen, we, we, we have we have we have those who attend Bible study and Bible colleges who listen to every podcast and every message that's out there who sometimes still don't know Jesus. Oh, why do I say that? Because Jesus again teaches them. Jesus teaches them. Jesus teaches them. And he teaches them. And he teaches them. And he teaches them. And you, in fact, let's, let's read from verse 25. As verse 25. It says, then Jesus said to them, you foolish people, you find it so hard to believe all that the prophets wrote in the scriptures. Wasn't it clearly predicted that the Messiah would have, would have to suffer all these things before entering his glory? Then Jesus took them through the writings of Moses and all the prophets, explaining from the scripture, explaining from all the scriptures, the things concerning himself. He took time to teach them. What taught his card sought Abba He took time to teach them. What taught his card sought Abba It was a lengthy teaching because he taught them all the way until they got to where they were apparently going to part ways. And, and Jesus is dealing with their doubt. He's Perhaps he's talking to them about him, him, not just being a prophet and him, not just being a great teacher, but being the son of God. Luke tells us here that for the remainder of the journey he teaches them. But Paul their eyes have still not opened. Their eyes have still not opened. See, what they were doing is that they were enjoying the information. They were enjoying the stories. It was, it was not in, in, in high terms. It was not becoming wisdom. It was remaining knowledge. It was remaining information. We can teach you and teach you and teach you. And unless you take that and appropriate it in the right place, all it remains is information. You can go out and you can teach people because we have people who can go out and tell everybody about Jesus but they themselves don't know him. Just like these two. Telling, telling this man, great teacher, great prophet and what? But they don't know him. But we have many people like that who have the knowledge yet don't know Jesus. We testify on our streets. See, I'm not saying don't do it anymore but I'll get to that in, in, in a moment of time. Praise the Lord. Amen. They enjoyed the information. I wonder for a moment, yeah, did they him. not question? How did this man go from not knowing anything that was happening in Jerusalem to suddenly telling them about everything in the scriptures? They not for a moment think. Were they dead dumb? They didn't see the connection. Something was happening. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. See, let me read the rest of the verse and I'll explain it. It's verse 28. By this time, they were nearing Emmaus. And at the end of their journey, Jesus acted as if he were going on. Jesus acted as if he were going on. But they begged him, stay the night with us, since it is getting late. So he went home with them, and as they sat down to eat, he took bread and blessed him. Then he broke it and he gave it to them. And suddenly, their eyes were opened and they recognized him. And at that moment, he disappeared. Hallelujah. So the eyes have still not been opened. They've enjoyed the information. Hallelujah. 
information with closed eyes is still a problem. Now they get to the end of their journey. And, 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 and I can, in my mind, I see Jesus saying, Thank you, guys, bye. Thank you for the journey. Thank you for the conversation. But I'm on my way. And Luke is explicit to put on there to say that Jesus was acting. Jesus was playing with them. He, he acts like he's traveling further down the road. But these two beg him to stay. Not because it's Jesus, because they don't know it's Jesus. They, they actually ask him to stay because they were enjoying the story. Perhaps they were, they were seeking more stories so that tomorrow, they could tell others the new nice stories that they got. Some of us are the Hallelujah. The latest news. So I can see him tomorrow and I can see him informed. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. There are levels of blindness. You know, they, they are those who love the word but don't know Jesus. Who can even teach others about Jesus. And that it comes from relationship, it comes from head knowledge. And that's what I see because the one comes with spirit and, and knowing. So you, know, you can know a lot about me from knowledge. And you can go and tell people. But you don't know me. But on us, you know from information about me. Many people will often speak about how strict I am. Some will give information and say, Pastor doesn't take nonsense. And it's true. <laughs> so, but if that is all you know about me, then you don't know me. Amen. You know my office. Yeah. But you don't know me personally. Because those who know me know there's more to that. There's, there's, there's an apostolic part that has to keep order and, and set that in. But you don't know me. What the outlast? Praise the Lord. Are, are you understanding what I'm, what I'm saying? Now we are calling the real troll. Praise the Lord. Somebody can tell you that and you will believe the information. And, and, and there are those who will actually hide from me. There are those who will not want to come to my office. There are those who will be afraid to ask for prayers because of the information that they have. They have no knowledge of me. Somebody told them. Pastor is strict. Somebody will be. Pastor's not going to take this nonsense of yours. And they'll duck and die. Until you actually get into the office. And perhaps you'll find that it's all true. <laughs> <laughs> but, but when you go to you, you get to find it. I'm saying that for a reason. You see, you can either know me from information, or you can know me relationally. And when you know me, you know you'll be able to come to me at any time. You know you'll be able to pitch up at my house. You know that you're able to pitch up at my house hungry. Broken, whatever, I will deal with things. But if you just know me from the information, then you'll be limited by the information that you have and the decisions you make out of that information that you have. And this is how many of us know Jesus. We just know him from the information that we have. You has no encounter with him. When we pray, it's King James. James. Hallelujah. Amen. There's, there's no coming to him. That's my Messiah, my Savior, my Savior, my God. My God. And to be able to cry before him. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. You can't you, you can't know Jesus only with knowledge. You can't just be in the books. There are those who can quote a whole lot of things. But they don't really know Jesus. Why? Because when trouble comes, they don't know him. They run away. 
They're not sure. Knowledge and information is great and it is needful. But it doesn't guarantee a relationship. Praise the Lord. Amen. Look, look how Jesus tests them. He, he, he acts like he's going further. Jesus has pursued them up to this point. And now it's their turn to pursue him. They beg him to stay. They, they're hungry now. They pursue. You know, the relationship with Jesus is like dancing sometimes. You walk from us and he comes from us. We are happy in the place of you. Our Amen. man, praise the Lord. Amen. In our relationship with Jesus, we we can't stop, stop at your introduction. As far as we want to, we've got to pursue Him. We have got to go deeper with Him. We have to see Julie James says that that when you draw nigh, He draws nigh. Amen. I was I I was saved when I witnessed. Signs and wonders. Last thing this one, I got saved because I saw the power of God at work. Last thing this one, I got born a man. I got born with seven. But I had to go further to encounter Him. But how many would you? My salvation experience could not be based on what I witnessed. I had to get to know the one who provided the miracle power of that day. You must go away and allow a man to have a And that's where we need to be. We are going to see the power. I looked for Him in the Word. I looked for. Him through studies. The word taught me is Praise the Lord. Amen. I spent time in the word. So the word is his Jesus had to take time to teach them the word. It was the word that taught me to serve. And I served. And, and it was the word that taught me to evangelize. And I evangelized. It was the word that said, give up on your life and follow me. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Because each of these things brings us closer and closer to him. We've got to pursue him. We've got to pursue him in the word. We've got to pursue him in prayer. We've got to pursue him in prayer. Remember our little Zacchaeus, short Zacchaeus. When, when Zacchaeus knew that this is the man that I want to meet, he had a problem, he was short. He, he, he was struggling to, to, to encounter this Jesus. But you know what? He made a plan. He didn't just pop up there and say, He made a plan. He ran ahead of them. He climbed the tree. He said, I'm going, to, I'm going to pursue him. And that's what the church doesn't do today. The church doesn't want to pursue him. We want Jesus to do all the pursuing. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus was just pursue. Like a desperate man. Amen. Like you know how some of the ladies do sometimes. We have to tell my name and John. Since the beginning of the year, it took her 10 years to respond to this man. Mama, I want to tell you how to tell you how to tell me. Praise the Lord. Because when they know you're interested and they're chasing you, like, nah, Mama, I don't want to tell you. No, no, I don't want you now. No, I want you now. Hallelujah. Amen. And then when he goes, you're like, oh, I'm going to tell you how to tell you how to tell you how to tell you. What happened? It went to Ali. And that's what... He, he's pursued us. We are school now. And you've got to turn around and pursue him. We now want to be in You've got to turn back and I love you. You've got to get to know him in the word. He can't be the only one chasing you. Who are you? He's the son of God. Everything we need is in him. Not everything he needs is in you. Hallelujah. We've got to pursue him, but, but we don't pursue him. This is in love elevation. But none of us want pursuit. None of us want to pursue Jesus. We want what elevation can give us. We want the new cars, we want the houses, we want the new outfits. But none of us want to pursue him. Listen, let me tell you something. The strength of cornerstone is not here on a Sunday. The strength of cornerstone is what I see on the Wednesday. I'm not going to fool myself. I'm learning this 
Ruda. The strength of this house. Are those who pitch up for Bible study? Those who pitch up for Tuesday prayer? The strength of our youth is not this whole aisle. It's those who pitch up for youth meetings. Not once a year, and the men and the women. Why? Because we are pursuing. We want more. We want to learn more. How do they get to know him if we're not going to learn? You see, despite me saying, Nobody wants it in a city. That, that we can't only be in the world. But as far as one just says, really. Jesus was mindful that their eyes could not be opened no, just until they were in the world. So there's going to be a balancing. Praise the Lord. Information will not change your life. Your eyes need to be open. But the eyes won't be open until you get the revelation of the world. And that's why he took the time to teach. To teach. To teach. It says everywhere the Old Testament mentioned him, he taught them. You see, he prepared them for the moment and then heaven said, right now they're ready. Heaven said, now they're ready. This is why you now go season after season. Many don't eat. Many don't eat. Because heaven says, Baba is they will, I, I will not let them recognize. Because they're not ready. Hallelujah. Amen. God promised to give you a Savior. Mm -hmm. This is what I'm promise is not elevation. If you take the Savior, you get the elevation. You've got to get the order right. Praise the Lord. Amen. You know? How many of us ever read our word outside of church? Are you pursuing him? Are you pursuing him? Are you get to know him? Go to where you Praise the Lord. Amen. This word is so precious. It directs us to him. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. We've, we, 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 we've got to move on. You see, Zacchaeus pursued and showed that Jesus died in his home. We don't see this pursuit anymore. People follow Jesus for convenience. Yeah. For the money, for the, the opportunities, for the, for the social connections. That was not Zacchaeus because Zacchaeus had all of that. He came to Jesus and made changes to his life. When, when, when he heard what Jesus had to say, he fixed his life. Okay. He didn't climb that tree so that people could say, ah, oh, Jesus and Zacchaeus. When he heard what Jesus had to say about his lifestyle, he made restitution. He sorted things out. Praise the Lord. Let me say this. Time and heat is against me. So their eyes were not open because of the teaching. It happened later, but without the teaching, their eyes would have never been open. So I'm going to so the teaching to get to this place where so their eyes were open. First, we studied on the last day, and then we open. It, it was the bread and the wine. What we see was something. Combined with the word. It was the final step of their journey. See, all of this played a part. We, we're sharing the communion meal this morning. But even that does not guarantee open eyes. It needs to come with the foundation of something. Praise the Lord. Amen. We speak week, month after month. Yeah, the is a power meal. It set the captives the free. The Egyptians came, the Israelites came out of Egypt. But you know, some of us are at the Egypt. point of saying, I don't know what you are lying. But I say, let's get to Naman and Shasha. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Or where are you standing and what level are you on? Is, 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 is heaven saying, don't let them see the power in the community? They're not ready. We've got to pursue him. We've got to pursue him. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. It's a journey. Wow. We've got to hunger after him. Tina We've got to hunger after his word. So so he is like he Bible. That's the truth right there. In we can't be as 
like these two followers of Jesus. We cannot afford to be like Cleopas and his partners. Our eyes yeah. were open. We can't afford that. As far as the Lord. Amen. We we in a church, yes, we walk with him. How we bless you, yes. As we witness or experience a miracle, yes. Many in the Bible experience the same things yet to not know Jesus. Jesus said many things that many don't understand throughout his word. Because Jesus teaches a different type of living. A different standard. Which many do not grasp. And because we do not grasp it, we lose our way. Jesus clearly told us through his word. You will suffer for righteousness sake. Until your eyes are opened. Suffering will be a problem to you. When your eyes are opened, you will see suffering in a different way. I promise you. I promise you. You are suffering in your suffering. We are Because your eyes are not open to you. Jesus spoke so many things that goes against what society says and teaches. Hallelujah. Jesus told them. Jesus told us too. Was it not said that the Messiah will suffer these things that will happen before he is resurrected? So why are you behaving? The, that's what he was saying. Why are you behaving the way you behave? That's why he was calling them unbelievers. Because when your when, when, when your actions don't line up with what you know, that's unbelief. Hallelujah. Amen. When, when you know what the word says and you are behaving in a contrary way, Jesus said, Do not fear. And if you're shivering and shaking, you can't be believing his word. Something's not right. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Jesus said, We will suffer on this earth. When suffering comes, we pray prayers that are not biblical. When your eyes are open, you say, Yes, thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. The meek shall inherit the earth. Hallelujah. And all the other things that He spoke in the Beatitudes. We're on our way to Mars to continue with our lives. And they were saying, Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. We go back when we are supposed to go forward. Jesus says, if you go higher, you must go lower. We just we you you appear soon. Maybe so when we go lower, we're fighting. We're fighting everything. We're rebuking the low situation. But you don't understand. How are you going to be elevated if you didn't go down? Yeah. Yeah. The eyes are closed. Jesus said to make you stronger and I'll let you fight. Yeah. 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 Now when you're fighting, you're cursing and killing everybody. Hallelujah. You ever seen two people in the boxing and one says you're too big? I want the championship but you're too big. Put me in fully blind body and tell you that I'm fired and you're down there. And that's what we often do because we're not yes. seeing our eyes are not open. We're not yes. understanding yes. His word. Yes. We're not yes. understanding yes. the way He works. Yes. So yes. the problem yes. yes. is because we're still half in the world. Blessed are the peacemakers. Blessed are those who mourn. Blessed are the ones who mourn. Blessed are those 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 Hallelujah. Amen. When your eyes are open. When the eyes are closed, you just not my problem. I know, you know, I know these people that will fight with me when they are back together. Praise the Lord. Amen. Jesus says it's better to give than to receive. Ah. It's better to give than to receive. We don't understand it. As you know. Because we have knowledge, we don't. We are not seeing him for what he is saying. We want to be like this, these men. We want to. We want to use the intelligence we've acquired, the knowledge that we've acquired to make 
calculated decision. When Jesus said it's more blessed to give than to receive, he was already worked out that I need so much money to so receive the money. You do. But that's when you walk alone. But if you choose to walk with Jesus, then he turns everything around. We, 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 when our eyes are open, we see life differently. We see, the world differently. We see situations differently. When, when our eyes are open, we're not looking for people to feel sorry for us all the time. It's such a heavy week today, I have church. It's so difficult to prepare for you guys this morning, but I did it nonetheless. No, I don't need your sympathy. I want his blessing. When I get off from here and I go to the Lord, you know what I was doing this week. We are you know what it took. Until our eyes are open, we will keep trying. We will keep trying. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Bible says, don't let your right hand know what your left hand is doing. If I read too much, I say, "Son, I'm passing this thing and this thing around." But for some of us, the whole world knows. Baba, you need to ease the long and the hard one to be done because you're not understanding of the scripture. Baba, I'm calling the Bible. The eyes are still closed to the area. I'm afraid to suffer no longer. When our eyes are open, we'll see Jesus and His teachings. Oh, my message is telling me so much. This is this is calling me. You see, Stephen was stoned to death. Mustifan walked out on a match as I hope, but in the last few moments he saw him. But the image is enough for our bodies. So he knew why he was stoned to death. Was woman a why it came on the man? He knew that his life would be given for something far more. But that's what people like he only get up to open a piece. Sadly, Stephen was in 2024. Mustifan like he just can't see my angel. I hate Jesus, I hate him, but they are killing me because of all that his man would have lost his opportunity. Now we are saying we need to have a star. But then it's we, we, to, we don't see what it's for. In the listen to them, there's no counter with Zan. As if I'm an inai, there's gonna be a new way of seeing. When the women can end child born, there's gonna be a new way of seeing. When the women can end child born, God didn't kill Goliath, David. We couldn't put a couple of lambs on Goliath to God have to do. We couldn't put one Caesar. If God had to knock Goliath down, David ran up and cut off his head. We couldn't put one Caesar. God didn't do it. We couldn't put a Zanga boy. We are not. God helps us out of certain situations. We couldn't put a cement. When we touch the ground, we gotta make sure. When we are the king of those things, when we are the king of those things, when we are the king of those things. Going back to seven. Back to seven. God says, "We are helping you up to this point. Get away from this thing. I'm giving you a mini supply. Don't be like this two followers because their eyes were closed. There is so much more in Christ. There is so much more in Christ. We need you understand that statement. There is so much more in Christ. We need to get over the carnal way of doing things. Our eyes must be open to Him. Praise the Lord. Will you pursue him? Will you pursue him personally? Will you pursue him corporately in the sense of coming to be more equipped to serve him? Would you was unconza? Praise the Lord. Amen. I love that the last verse of chapter twenty-four. Down. Let's look. I love that the last verse of chapter twenty-four says that the moment the eyes were open, Jesus left. Would you want to make sure about when you change your heart? You see, something changes in your life when you start to see him in everything. They, they didn't need him physically there. He knew their lives changed. The moment they saw him, they would see him in everything. And the Bible says, within the hour, within the hour, within the hour they were back in Jerusalem, they were in Jerusalem to go back to Jerusalem. They went to witness. What does it mean? Because they got back on the road. They got back on the road. They completed their followership. They completed their discipleship. They came to understand the purpose for their lives. They came to understand what God had brought them back home. Jesus had finalized, formalized what they needed to do. They now saw it clearly. Instead of going back to Emmaus and mourning and crying, we're going back to Jerusalem, the place where they killed Jesus. We are not afraid anymore. We're going to tell them. We're going to become witnesses of Jesus Christ. Even if they kill us, they will kill us. But we have seen Jesus. Our life has been changed completely. And when your eyes are open, you must stop running away from the money problem. 
you will stop running away, away from the people problems. You will start to face life head on. Some of us are running, 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 running from problems. We are running from situations. We are running from people. I don't want to serve in the church anymore because someone so looked at me like this. When your eyes are open, you will know why you are here. You will know that it is Jesus that you are serving. I don't care for who I do and who. And in fact, when you grow in Him, you will start to see Jesus in my even if they persecute the problem is that our eyes need to be opened. Why can't you let go of sin? Because we have not seen him. You know what the word says. You are convicted from your sin because of the word, but you have no relationship with him because what's keeping you in the sin. If your eyes were open to the relationship of Jesus Christ, you would never go back there. You would embrace him and you would hold on to him. But I came to understand what this Jesus did for me. The sweetness of alcohol was lost like that. The attraction of sin was broken. I got to see him not as somebody that's keeping me away from nice things. I saw him as my savior. The and until your eyes are open to that, you will be forced to be here what your heart is waiting And this is a kingdom problem today. This is a kingdom problem today. This is a kingdom problem today. Some of your hearts are in the parking lot. It's the car you drove in with. You know what your heart is there. Some of you are physically in the church, but your heart is in your house. Some of you might be on weekend off, but your heart is at your work. Your heart is at your business. My business is what I Hallelujah. Amen. Because we've not surrendered our hearts to him. We've not no, opened our eyes to have not been open to him. I mean, Matthew 6 and 33, seek ye first the kingdom of God. Yeah. That's when the change comes. Yeah. When your eyes are open, then the pastor is not forcing you to live in a contrary way. The pastor is not trying to tell you that, that this should be the type of style you must wear. I'm keeping you from wearing right. the latest fashion. But you when you come to see Jesus, something changes in your heart. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Your belief is in your actions. Amen. What you do with what you know. What you do with what you know. Amen. What you do with what you know. What you do with what you know. Praise the Lord. We all have much information. Till us the living one in need. But we're not doing anything with it. That's our belief and that's our faith. Because you know I shouldn't touch this. We ask that we lama get tea, you know. I know I shouldn't touch this. We ask that we lama get tea, you know. I'm touching it all day long. What I'm getting to me looks so high. Is I can't break away. But I'm poor, look so bad now. Information is not going to save you. Living while the naked sea is saved, it's not even counting with you. Amen. And my prayer, in tanda zowami, my burden throughout this week, just as I am really was just that. We will all come. Eyes of the church is going to be. So until that happens, even as a church, we, we, we fight department amongst departments. We, we look at personalities. 